In this video lesson, I will explain graphically how to represent different types of forces. Then, how to combine all forces in a single diagram known as free body diagram. Let me start with apply force or FF. The definition of apply force is an external pull or push that causes a change in motion. For example, here we have a box over a flat surface being pulled by a force or F force. So in this first case, the F force is parallel to the horizontal surface. This is how we represent. The second case now is a apply force and angle with the horizontal surface. An angle means that if you extend this line, this angle here and this angle are the same. So to represent the diagram in a proper way, we just extend a arrow from about the center of the box that represents the object. Now, how we are going to work with a apply force and angle. We need to draw some coordinates, in this case here y and x, and on the tip of this arrow we are going to project on the x axis the corresponded FF projected, which is Fx. And we are going to do the same thing with the y and the uh, now we can easily close a right triangle here, which is easier to work with. So I'm going to temporarily move this arrow to this end of this um, triangle right here. So now we have FY. So to look a little bit better, let me just isolate this. So now we have the FF is the hypotenuse, the FY is the opposite for this angle, and FX is the adjacent for this angle. For this reason, we can calculate FX and FY using base trig functions, which is sine and cosine. So let me show here a table with my work done. So here we have for X, FX is the cosine, which is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And for the Fy will be the sine. So the sine of this angle is the opposite over hypotenuse, which is Ff. Now in both cases, we can multiply both sides by Ff to cancel the denominator here. So let me show you. And now what we have left is a flip in the equation. We have fx is equal to ff cosine of this angle. And fy is ff sine of this angle. The second type of force is weight or fg. Definition of weight force fg. It is a force caused by gravity acting on an object with mass. Weight in Newton is the product of an object mass, m, in kilograms and the acceleration of gravity, g, which is 9.8 meters per second square. So the weight force, Fg, depends on its mass, the mass of an object, and the acceleration of gravity. So this triangle is very useful to derive formulas when we have three variables. So the first formula is Fg is m times g. And the second formula is m is equal to Fg over g. 
Now let the, let's take a look on a couple of situations about weight force. Number one, an object, in this case a box, on a solid surface represented by this gray line. So the weight is a, a straight arrow from the center of mass of the object down. This is Fg. The second situation is a box on a flexible surface. So it's going to bend a little bit. Now the Fg arrow, even though the size of the arrow is smaller than the previous one, but the weight is the same. Uh, there is no difference actually in the size of the arrow. was just a situation here because I run out of space and I have to draw the arrow a little bit smaller. But the arrow should be the same size. And the third case is object or a box that is falling. There is no contact surface here. So the weight force is also from the center of mass the object straight down. Because the weight depends on only on the mass of the object and the acceleration of gravity g. The last situation is an object or a box on an inclined surface. So here is an inclined surface. Notice that is a ramp or a slope. And now the box is sitting on. So the direction of the arrow is straight down. In this case here, um, the, the arrow is straight down, which is Fg. Normal force, or F, sub n. Notice this n is uppercase n. Definition of normal force. It is a contact force caused by an object on a contact surface. Fn is always perpendicular to the contact surface. And it prevents solid objects from passing through each other. Here I have three situations. A. The box is on a solid surface is indicated by this gray line. So the normal force, like the definition says, is normal or perpendicular to the contact surface. So here is the normal force, is perpendicular. Usually is drawn from the center of the mass up. Now the object is on a fl flexible surface. Now we have the same arrow upward, which is the normal force, perpendicular to the contact surface. Now you notice here that is bending, but we are drawing here just a single normal force. There are many, but we have represented just one. So the bottom line is upward, uh, is perpendicular to the contact surface. The third case, now the object is falling. So there isn't a contact surface. Therefore, normal force is not acting on a falling object. Friction force or FF. The sub F is a lowercase f. There are two types of friction force. One is a static friction, the second one is kinetic friction. I'm going to start with static friction. It is a force caused by two contact surfaces interlocked with each other that will require a greater applied force to start the motion. Here, I have a box on a platform, so the blue shade indicates a platform. This circle indicates a microscopic view between the bottom of the box and the top surface of the platform. The 
box is sitting on the platform, causing both contact surfaces to interact with each other. So here is the bottom of the box and here is the top of the platform. Now I'm going to apply a force FF to move this box and I will have to pull harder in order to overcome the interlocked condition. And the friction force will be greater. So the static friction force is always greater than the kinetic friction force. Kinetic friction, it is a force caused by two contact surfaces rubbing on each other when the object is in motion. Both contact surfaces become smoother due to the weight of the object pressing down the contact surfaces. So now the contact surface appears smoother and they are not very hard on the slide on each other. Therefore, the apply force will be less and the force of friction will also be less. Friction force formula. Here is a box on a flat surface. Now I'm going to apply a force to pull this box, which is FF. The force that opposes the motion is FF. The value of the friction force FF depends on two factors. One, the contact surface materials. And second one, the normal force Fm. So the friction force formula can be written as FF is equal the contact material represented by mu times the normal force. So because we have a formula with three variables, I like to use this triangle to derive other formulas. For example, FF here, mu Fn. So I can find a formula for mu. Mu is FF over Fn. Mu is called coefficient of friction. The coefficient of friction is the ratio of a force to force. So for this reason, coefficient of friction has no units. Free body diagram or FBD. A free body diagram is used to represent graphically all forces acting on an object free of its surroundings and showing only forces in all directions. A FBD or a system in equilibrium is useful to calculate unknown values. A static equilibrium, a stationary system not moving is always in equilibrium. For example, the hanging mass lab. Dynamic equilibrium a system moving at constant speed when acceleration is zero. In both cases, static and dynamic equilibrium, the sum of all forces in a specific direction, horizontal and vertical, are equal. It can be summarized with arrows. The sum of all forces up is equal to the sum of all forces down. The sum of all forces to the left is equal to the sum of all forces to the right. Now let me show you the free body diagram for a box pulled by a force parallel to the horizontal surface in the vertical direction. 
So the sum of the forces up, in this case just Fn, is equal to the sum of forces down, in this case only Fg. Fn is equal to Fg. Now let's look horizontally. The sum of forces to the left is equal to the sum of forces to the right. In this case, FF is equal to FF. Now this is true when this box here is being pulled by a force and moving at constant speed. Now let's take a look how the forces will add up for when a box is pulled by a force at angle data with the horizontal surface. So here we have a component. So we have the X and Y component. We are not going to be working with FF, FF because it's not aligned with the horizontal and the vertical. We need to find the components in order to work with that. So in this case, vertically, the sum of forces up is equal to sum of forces down. So what do we have up? We have normal force and we have the Y component of FF. And what do we have now? We have the weight. It's important to indicate the tip of the arrow to group all the forces that go in one direction. So here we have Fn plus Fy is equal to Fg. Now horizontally we have uh, the sum of forces on the left is equal to the right. So then we have just two forces so FF is equal to Fx. A free body diagram of a box pulled on an inclined surface with a known angle, in this case 30 degrees. So this box is pulled, is being pulled by this F force upward. So here I have a trace line. On this trace line, I'm going to draw my normal force, which is perpendicular to the contact surface. So here is the contact surface between the box and the inclined surface. So this is my FN. Now to complete all the, the forces acting in the system is missing the friction force. So I know that the motion is going upward. So for this reason, the friction opposes the motion is going on the other side. Right here, FF. So now, as we look, all the forces here I need to be aligned on a shifted grid. So here I have my Y grid and I need to draw my X grid on the center of this box. So this force FG needs to be aligned with those two two lines, two trace lines. So we need to draw the components. So the Y component is this right here, which is FGY. And the X component is FGX. Now I need to bring the FGX temporarily down here to close this right triangle. I'm going to do this. Now I need to find the angle right here. So it's very simple. Um, if we look this corner here, we can conclude this is also 30 degrees. 30 degrees, 30 degrees. Now, just follow my pointer on the screen. So we have this triangle right here. Okay? So this triangle, one corner is 30 degrees. This corner is 90 degrees right here, 90, it's perpendicular. So this missing angle must be 60 because the sum of the internal angles of a triangle is equal to 180 degrees. 
So this is 60. If right here in this corner now, now let's forget about this big triangle and now look at this corner right here. So in this corner, I have 90 degrees. So since this one is 60, this is small here is 30. So what happened is that when you have a ramp um, with an, an angle, so this angle is exactly the same angle of this triangle if you draw in this shape. To simplify all the, the geometry of this type of problem. Okay, so now what we need to do is calculate the components FGX and FGY, FGX and FGY in terms of this angle. So as you see, FGX is the opposite of this angle, so I'm using sine. And this FGY is close to this angle adjacent, so I'm going to use cosine. Okay, so here is the table that summarizes everything that I just said. So FGX and FGY, FGX now is in terms of sine. So the um, opposite over hypotenuse, because my hypotenuse is this value of FG. And FGY is cosine. FGY is um, the adjacent over hypotenuse, which is FG. Now I'm going to multiply both terms by FG to cancel here. And the final expression for FGX is FG sine of this angle. Now, I know that I use here a value for angle, which is 30, and here I'm using a general value, which is data. The reason why I use 30 for this example to make it easier for me to explain to you why this angle here ended up being 30, the same angle of the ramp. So now that we know, we can shift to a general value of angle, which you always we call data, data, beta, alpha. Um, now for FGY, the expression is, I forgot the G here, so FGY, please make the correction right here, FGY is FG cosine of beta. Now, to because this supposedly is moving at constant speed, the box is moving upward, being pulled by this F force at constant speed, so we can state the sum of forces up is equal to the sum of forces down. And then you have to tilt your head in order to see that. So forces up here, I have Fn, and forces down, I have Fgy. Now, on the left and right, we have, on the left, I have FF plus FGX, or vice versa. And on the other side, I have FF. So this is the expression that um, the result of the analysis of a free body diagram on an incline.